In this lesson, we're going to go ahead and install a DHCP server on our network. And what we're going to do is install it on my primary domain controller. You can actually allocate this role to a brand new server if you'd like, or put it on the backup server. However, for just this lesson and for the lessons that are part of this series, I'm going to go ahead and just use the primary domain controller as also a DHCP server. And so to do this, um, I've, got, I've got server manager up and running right now. If I click on roles, you're going to see that I currently have two roles installed here. I've got the Active Directory domain services and just the DNS server. And this is my primary domain controller. What I want to do is go to add roles. And we're going to go ahead and hit next. And the role that I want to add is this one here, DHCP server. So go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to go ahead and hit next. Now, if you're not familiar with DHCP server is, it does tell you right here. Basically, will allow you to, to hand out or give addresses to all the computers that turn on in your network that are asking for them. And it gives them a lot of network information as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit next. A lot of times when you plug in a router, in most cases with a router, there's actually a DHCP enabled on it, and it's going to automatically give you addresses. Most of them are set up that way. And so what we're going to do is actually change that role. Instead of using a router, we're going to use our server as our DHCP server. And the reason for that is because we've got more options and customization options that are available on the server operating system than we do on most typical routers. I'm going to go ahead and hit next here on this. Now the network connection bindings. This is going to be the network adapter that we want to use for our DHCP server. And if I take a quick look at our actual topology, you can see here that I've got, this is what we're going to kind of look at, we've got a primary server created already, we've got a backup domain controller created already, the primary and the backup, and what we're going to do is, we're going to use this network connection, the 192.168.1.2, it's my only network adapter that I have on the computer at this moment, that is going to be the location or the network adapter that is going to have requests coming in for the DHCP server, so clients are going to ask basically across the network on this line and you can tell that's the only option. If you have multiple network adapters on your server you want to make sure you pick the one that is part of the actual network. Alright so back to our network bindings. This is the one that I want to use. This is the network adapter that I want to use to handle the DHCP requests. Alright let's go ahead and hit next. Now we're going to go ahead and do some other settings with the DNS settings. You can see this is the parent domain pending.local. This is what I want clients whenever we have workstations joining our network. This is what the domain is that I want to let them know that we're part of. We're part of the pending.local, which is just my last name.local domain that I created. And so right now what we're going to do here is the preferred DNS server for IP version 4 addresses. When clients are asking for the IP address, of the DHCP or the DNS server, they're going to want to know what it is. And if I refer back to my topology, this is my primary domain controller and it is also my DNS server as well. Actually, both of these servers will work for this. So what I want to do is I want to use the address of my primary domain controller for this. If you've been following the lessons, this is what we want to focus on as our DHCP server as well as our DNS server. So we're going to go ahead and use that. I'm going to go ahead and type that address in. And I can go ahead and hit validate to validate, and it is valid. So we're going to go ahead and hit next now. Most typical networks that are installed new today aren't going to be dealing with the WINS. Um, so we're going to go ahead and the WINS server, we're just going to go ahead and leave. It's not required. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. We do need to set a DHCP scope. And I'm, this is basically the whole concept of the address scheme that we're going to use for our server. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add. The name doesn't really matter. It's more of an identification tag for you to look at and kind of understand what the actual scope is. So I'm just going to call this one uh, primary scope. You can call it whatever you want for this one here. The starting IP address is going to be the first address that's going to be available to hand out to clients who ask for them. By looking at my topology again, I've added some different address ranges. Now we're using for this lesson a class C address and basically the range that we have here for what we've chosen is 
0 all the way to 192.168.1.255. A couple addresses that we cannot use for our scope are going to include the network address, which just identifies the network, and that ends in the dot zero on this particular type of address. And then the broadcast address, which is broadcast to everybody on our domain, or our network, I should say, is the 255. So both of those two addresses are not available. So really I have 254 addresses to use with the class C address. So what we're going to do is look, we've already used three of them. We've used the 1.1, the 1.2, and the 1.3. The 1.1 is for the router, 1.2 is for my primary domain controller, and 1.3 is for my backup domain controller. So I cannot use those, and so when I need to have a starting IP address, I need to give myself a little bit of room or some buffer room in the event that I have other items or objects on my network that need to have a static IP address. And now if you think about what's on your network, you may have uh, printers, uh, you may have other controllers, uh, domain controllers, you may have other computers that need to have specific IP addresses, whether it's network attached storage devices, and the list just kind of goes on. So you want to give yourself a buffer room just in the event that you're going to have to add additional static IP addresses. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually start our scope a little bit higher than 4. We're going to actually use something more like maybe 50. That gives us plenty of addresses to use here on a small network for the starting address. And the maximum address that I can use, I cannot use the 255 because that's the broadcast address, so I'm going to have to use 254. So let's go ahead and go back to that. And for our starting IP address, we'll go ahead and start 192.168.1.50. And that gives us basically 1 through 49 to use for static IP addresses. And so we're going to go ahead and end this at 192.168.1.254. All right. Now the subnet type is going to basically be the length of time that's going to be required by default for our leases. Basically what this means is the fact that when I give out an IP address to a client, how long will they be able to keep that IP address before they're going to have to get a new one or before I can release that IP address for somewhere else. And so eight days is the typical one for wired and that's usually a pretty good place. If you're mostly dealing with wireless clients that come and go often, you may want to go something to like eight hours. And so I'm going to leave it eight days because we're going to assume that we're going to typically have wired computers on our network. The subnet mask is fine. Now the default gateway here, if I type this in, then basically all the clients that ask for an address from our server are going to know how to get out of my network if I type it in. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And if you look at my topology, that is the address for the router. It is the way out of my network. If my computer was to try to go to the internet, for, for example, I need to go to this IP address in order to get out of my network. And it's typically mostly a router, unless you have some kind of proxy or some kind of other gateway or firewall that you have set up on your network. This is typically going to be your router. And so that's what I want to have for this address. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see the scope has now been added. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. I'm not going to be dealing with DHCP version 6, uh, so we're going to leave this actually the way that it is enabled, and this allows the uh, computers that are enabled for, for version 6 to come up with their own address. So we're going to go ahead and hit next for this. Everything is going to be left the way that it is, just next. And now we're going to confirm everything that we've got. I'm going to go ahead and hit install. Now that it has installed successfully, we're going to go ahead and hit close. And you can see that we now currently have the DHCP server role installed on our computer as well. So what we're going to do is go to the administrative tools and we're going to actually open up the administrative tools for the DHCP. So let's go ahead and double check all of our settings. I'm going to click on that. So what we're going to do is go ahead I'm going to maximize that and move this column over to look at it a little bit more. You can see my server here. I'm going to go ahead and expand it. You can see version 4 and version 6 have both been turned on for the DHCP server. The green check it's basically an indicator that tells us all is okay. And what I'm going to do is expand that. And you can see the scope here for the primary scope. And we're going to go ahead and expand that as well. Now a couple things that we have are the address pool, which is basically the range of addresses that we're going to use on our network that allow us basically when a client asks for an address, it can get anything between the 50 to 254. So now we're going to look at the address leases. The address leases are going to be, if we've assigned addresses, you can go ahead and see those addresses in here and see how much longer they have with that address before they have to renew it. The reservations, we can set based on MAC addresses. We can actually put reservations, meaning we can assign a specific IP address 
for a specific MAC address. And this is, comes in handy when you're doing things like printers. Rather than necessarily giving a, a static IP on the printer itself, because there's so many different printers and so many different configurations for um, their actual setup configuration, we could actually just find the MAC address for it and just assign it a static IP address. Or actually, it's really a, a dynamic address, but it's going to stay the same based on the MAC address itself. And I've also got the scope options. And this is where I really want to pay attention to is double check your network, your topology, and make sure this is all what, what it's supposed to be. The router is my way out. That's my gateway. That's the right address. The DNS server, that looks correct, as well as the DNS domain name. So these are the things that are going to be passed along to every client that requests an address from my DHCP server. And now that I have everything up and running and I've checked it all, the next thing to do is to actually test to make sure it actually works. And so what I've got is I've modified my network just a little bit. I've actually installed another computer. Uh, call, it's a Windows 7 computer. I'm going to call it PC1. And it's just the client computer that I'm going to start using for my network. And so if you're following along and you're using virtual machines, basically I just created a new virtual machine and installed Windows 7 and set it on the internet switch. And so if you're following along and you're using just hardware itself, then plug a client computer into the switch to verify everything. So here's how this works. When this computer boots up, and this is going to be a Windows 7 computer, when it boots up, it sends out a request, a DHCP request, out onto the network. It broadcasts it out there for every computer, and it's going to ask for an address. And this is set up by default on all Windows computers. And most, most Linux as well as Macintosh computers do the same thing. It's going to broadcast out a request. And the server, and you see which one here is the DHCP server, is going to get that request and basically send it the information that's going to basically contain the available IP address as well as uh, any information as far as the gateway and so forth. And they basically will communicate and agree upon these settings. And then this computer will eventually take on an available IP address from the DHCP server. If all goes well, typically, usually, the first address that's in the scope will give, be given out first, and then it just goes from then on until the end of the scope. So I'm going to expect that the address that I'll get is going to be the first one in my scope, which is 192.168.1.50. So we're going to go ahead and start this machine up, and then we're going to log in and verify our IP settings. So here's my brand new computer that I've just installed Windows 7 on, and I'm going to go down here now to the start, and I'm going to actually type in CMD, which is the command prompt, and I'm going to run the ipconfig command just to verify that I've received everything I need. ipconfig, and I'm going to do the forward slash all and hit enter. And you can see here a couple different things that we've got. One of the things we've got here, of course, this DNS suffix. You see my domain name has been um, picked up as far as the scope options are concerned. If I look for the IP version 4 address, there it is, 192.168.1.50. So it actually did get that address from our DHCP server. The subnet was also picked up. The lease, as far as when I've obtained the lease, as well as when the lease expires, is on here as well. The default gateway that I set up is also being passed along, so now my computer will know how to leave my network. So that's an important address. The DHCP server that's been picked up, and you can see this information, even the DNS server, my domain name server. This is all that information that was in my scope options is now available on my client without having to actually configure anything. It's just automatically picked up because they're set up to receive an address and the scope options automatically in most client machines. And so it was successful. And so now returning back to my topology here, I have a DHCP server, I have a backup server, and now I verified everything running here on my client. When I booted up the client and looked at the IP configuration for it, I was able to communicate with the DHCP server, receive an IP address, it was the first one that was available, and my computer is now up and running. So this completes the lesson on setting up a DHCP server.